I used to fly loads. I used to do oh, stuff. we went to Shanghai together and you were terrified on the flight, weren't you? No, Just, uh, no, I wasn't. It, it, and do you remember that girl come up to you and she went, uh, do you know uh, David Beckham? And I went, no, do you know Chairman Mayor? What a stupid <laughs> question. I'm waiting for Susan Murray. She said, right, she says it was coming 11.30. No, 11, and it's 11.35. There's gonna be an excuse. And, hey, she's like, there she is. Susan Murray. Hello, no, green sorry, green. sorry, Hello. sorry. Coordinate. I've already had an argument with a mechanic this morning. Nice to see you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Susan Murray. Hello. Um, what happened? Oh, my handbrake isn't working properly, and they serviced my car, and then they went, I'll oh, bring it in Monday, and I bought it in Monday, and they went, oh, we're chocolate short shaft. Oh, it's working properly. He's like, well, I have to hoik it right up. Oh, it's working properly. Yeah, but you're a bloke, you're stronger than me. It was working. They just fobbed me off, so I'll be writing them a review. I'm going to fix it myself, and I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> should get one of me telling the dog to fuck off. Shut the fuck <laughs> up! What's wrong with you? Weirdo. You're going to shut up now. <laughs> shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I'm going to take that dog up to the mechanics. Just throw it at them. Yeah. My new mechanic that I'm going to go to, that um, that went on fire and it's right next to Because I run a gig in Walthamstow, don't I? I run a gig at... Red Inn. I got a phone call, going, the pub's on fire, the pub's on fire. But it wasn't, it was the mechanics next to it, which is the new mechanics I'm probably going to use. So the next time we had a gig in that upstairs, the pub just stank of smoke because it was the, the garage that had gone on fire. So I just went on stage and I was having seen us go, did anybody have a car in the garage when it set on fire? Like, you're ringing up going, is my car done? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really well done, actually. <laughs> So, Hello. Susan Murray, the Susan Murray, where, when did you start comedy? Why did you start and when did you start? Why did I start? I was working as a waitress, as a cutter. Now, I, um, I was working as a lighting camera assistant. I worked in 3D stop frame animation and I worked at Spitting Image on a programme called Crapston Villas. Okay. And the woman who... Oh, hang on, Frankie, just like that. I loved Crapston Villas. I was the trainee oh, let camera me get your assistant. Hair. Play with your hair. Look I at was that. the trainee. <laughs> I was the trainee camera assistant. <laughs> the woman who wrote and directed that, her sister had done a comedy course with Hattie Hayridge at Jackson's Lane. And I remember going on about wanting to do stand-up and she went, My sister did a course at Jackson's Lane. So after that contract finished, or well, just as it was coming to, to an end, I signed up for the, the course at Jackson's Lane. And the first two weeks it was uh, Dave Thompson. Dave Thompson, who was one of the Tinky Winky, yeah, 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 he was Tinky Winky. Yeah, I must uh, get him. He'll be. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lots of people did Jackson's Lane, didn't they? At the end of that six weeks, we did a show at the end because you always do a showcase, yeah. don't you? And I wasn't even going to do the showcase. And then a guy on the course went, "Oh, I'm doing the showcase." And I thought, "Well, you're shit. So if you're doing it, I'm doing it." <laughs> so then I did. I was so petrified, and I would shake, and my mouth would go dry. It just, I remember just talking to someone at the Phoenix Bar, going, "I'm doing a gig soon." I like. <laughs> Yeah, so that was my first gig, and it was the 18th of May, 1997. Oh, wow. Did it go well? I was third best. But no, who, mate, who said you were third best? You... I just knew I was third best, oh, okay. yeah. I'm very not deluded. I don't think I'm brilliant, and I don't think I'm rubbish. <laughs> I know I'm like somewhere in that middle bit, which is fine. If you like this interview, make sure to like. And subscribe. See? I didn't even have to say that. Subscribe is the main thing. Subscribe. I'm subscribed. Oh, Before you... I even did this. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've watched most of them. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, back to the interview. Recently, I met Ben Elton. Such a, such a fan girl. I saw that as well, yeah. Go Do you know what? I miss... Oh, yeah. She doesn't like Ben Elton. <laughs> She's triggered the dog. <laughs> Does your dog vote reform? <laughs> I mentioned Ben Elton. She's freaked out. <laughs> Ben Alton, I shot Ben Alton at the Shepherd's Bush Empire. He's a lovely guy. Yeah, Ben was lovely, and I told him a joke that he laughed at. And he asked me, he says, have you got any notes? Was there anything you would change? I think Ben Alton was asking me for notes. And I did go, you did pronounce Caniston wrong, actually. <laughs> he said, Canastin. I was like, it's Caniston. So I picked him up on that. But he was really, really nice. Gave me his email address. Um, oh, can I have that? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll sort it out. Come on, Ben. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm collecting them, so now I'm mates with Peter Richardson, right. Nigel Planer, yes. Ben Elton. I've met Lisa Mayer. She wrote The Young Ones with Ben Elton oh and Rick Mayo. So I'm I've, collecting all these people that influenced me when I was like 14, I think 15. I bumped into uh, Nigel Planer, put, put his head through the door at the comedy store at the, the 40th birthday party. Oh, did he? Yeah, I didn't say hello to I him. I remember just seeing him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you took that really nice photograph of me, Joe, and Sally. You know, so and that yes, sofa. You, that, that, and I'm like, ah! We're just like Enjoy so it. happy with ourselves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this is my Susie Quattro outfit and my rock and roll outfit. 
and my boots are filthy, which I think is apt. Because um, I wear them a lot. Best gig? Probably Comedia, actually. You know when you come off stage and no one says anything to you? None of the blokes say anything to you. The because, acts, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you've done so well, they're a little bit annoyed. <laughs> With that, like, and no one, no one said a word to me, and I, I knew I'd had a proper belter. Or like when you're doing your solo shows in Edinburgh, because yeah. it's your hour, isn't it? Yeah. My whole last run, really, because I was doing a show that I really, really enjoyed doing. Is that the one about plane crashes? Yeah. Susan Murray's scared of flying. And you did a show about plane. <laughs> it wasn't about no, plane it was, crash. About... It was, well, it was about plane. It was called How Not to Die in a Plane Crash. Yeah. And it was about my unhealthy obsession with a documentary series called Air Crash Investigation. Yeah. I just love it. And I like the narrator's voice because it kind of gets me, because I'm an insomniac as well, obviously. Right. Um, and the narrator's voice gets me to sleep. And obviously I know all the stories, so I don't have to wait up to the end because I know what the ending is. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and so, it says in the title. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. So. And then it just gets me off to sleep. So That kind of mayhem gets you off to sleep. On yeah, the it's either that or a murder documentary. <laughs> Is that meant to help you with your fear of flying? Or, or oh, it's made it a hundred times worse. And I did a fear of flying course, which did help for a while. Why are you fascinated with the planes and the ca crashing? Are you, why, why, the what fear? a horrifying way to die. But it's might... just so mind-bogglingly horrific. And I like the way they use detective skills to work out why it's happened. Yeah. I find that really interesting. Yeah, but where's the fear come from? There's no hard shoulder in the sky, is yeah. there? You can't just pull over if something's going wrong. No. So <coughs> the, I'm fascinated by that because I, I, I used to fly loads. I used to do oh, stuff. we went to Shanghai together and you were terrified on the flight, weren't you? No, just, no, it, I wasn't. It, it, you were, was you I? went and sat on your own because Did you didn't want to be weird. Was I? Yeah. She's <laughs> yeah, you were. I'm not scared of flying. They were kind of expat gigs in an Irish bar, wasn't it? Was yeah, and bar? do you remember that girl come up to you and she went, uh, do you know uh, David Beckham? And I went... <gasps> No, do you know Chairman Mayor? What a stupid <laughs> question. I don't remember that. <laughs> I, do. I remember you both bought, you and Alex bought some, an outfit. What, one of those Chinese dresses from, yeah. the, from the market in the old town bit. I was speaking to Alex about it. I think it was, it was her 30th birthday. See, she, she was so tired because of the time zone. She was 30 for like 36 hours <laughs> because it was... So I just remember going to restaurants and seeing snakes and things where you could eat. The you know, food juice. was so rancid. And oh. I, I, remember, I remember thinking... I liked it. I remember you thinking, oh, I just want an omelette or something. Yeah. <laughs> so I think after about five days, I just went... I remember saying to you, she would just go and get a pizza. She would just go and get a curry. And we just started doing that because the food was... <laughs> because the meat, they don't cut it into like um, fillets. They just bash it all up together and it's like the sinew and the bone and the gristle. And like every single mouthful of meat I had in Shanghai I ended up pulling it back out of my... I think I just went veggie in the end because it was just all so rancid. Well, I remember doing it similar with Sean Mia when we went to Bosnia to do some gigs out there. Did you do all those army gigs? I did a quite a few. Yeah. I did. I did army. Do you know I was the the first woman to MC an army gig? The only woman that MCed an army gig before me was Vera Lynn. Bloody hell! That's a big gap, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. What did this bloke stay? This bloke was stood up and he was. I had like my jeans had a bit of kink in the zip, and the throat. Well, she's got a cock, and like. <laughs> <laughs> so the following day, I spent the entire day just like trying to write out my set and just doing the shortest crudest jokes yeah and then i remember writing across the set list just beast them because <laughs> that's all they want they just want you to go on and rip the piss out of their mate right. do you like your photo i've been taken or are you just you anxious about getting I'm it right i'm physically quite awkward and and if you ever get a decent photograph of me it's normally a fluke listen we're gonna get a good photograph of you. <laughs> like when people take photographs of me on stage because i don't keep still so I'm like i'm just good <laughs> It's like, a, it's like a, it's like a yeah. flicky book of gurney because my mouth's like. <laughs> <laughs> is that because you're naturally uh, expressive? I mean, it, uh, or yeah, you, yeah. People go. I took a photograph of you on stage, and I go, "Oh God, I don't want to see this," because it's always. Like, I think maybe like in 28 years, I've got like maybe five decent on ones of me on stage. There was two, I think. There's one of you about to go on stage because you were comparing, and there's one of Ian Moore, one of my favourite photographs, because like backstage, front stage, because I was trying to do this back to yeah, front thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ian Moore was waiting to go, and you were on stage. And there's one of you and Junior Ashtray hugging. hugging. Yeah, I really like that picture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Worst gig? Oh, um, I had a dreadful gig for Kevin Precious, and I felt so, felt so bad. A group of men in their 50s had asked to sit at the front. That's never a good sign, is it? And I went on, and I opened with my wire boiler so expensive with him, which is a lot funnier than it sounds. And this woman, who was married to a plumber, started arguing with me. 
and not even in a pleasant she just started round with me saying they're not expensive or, or just yeah yeah or, just just like <laughs> and i was kind of on the back foot for all and then i was kind of like you know when you're in out you yeah. never get you never get any momentum going it was awful it was just <laughs> it was really bad but the worst bit about it was i left realized i'd left my phone backstage had to walk back in to get my phone Hood up, right? <laughs> Trying to be as I was kind of like sort of scurrying out. I overheard one of the group of the blokes going, "Yeah, yeah." I thought she really struggled, and I thought oh, I can't really argue with that because he's absolutely right. I really struggled. I remember that early on in you know gigging, you used to stay for the whole show, watch the acts, but you know you just do your gig and go. Yeah, you? yeah. Jonglers used to be like you'd be there for like two nights, yeah. so you'd all be there together anyway, yeah. and in the same hotel, which was mayhem. <laughs> it really was days. mayhem, it really was. The, the gigs were always just fantastic. But it's really funny, fun. you used to get kind of pretty off your face on the Friday night after the gig, and then Saturday was... Like, to the point where I would think to myself, if anybody heckles me tonight, I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd think to myself, why am I doing this to myself? And then I had to just like, I had to just be really disciplined and not drink on a Friday, because I was like, I can't... I can't keep doing gigs. I'm getting away with it, but I'm in a proper state. And then I was like, right, I'm not drinking on Friday because I, I just don't want to be in that state on yeah, Saturday. Yeah, yeah. I think you've got to be really tough to do this job because just it's not just the being on stage, but you've got to be able to deal with like stag dudes and hen dudes, like cope top stag dudes as well, Ooh, because they don't like a woman on stage because they know they're too scared to do it. So you're kind of like, you're making them think about their own masculinity ah. because you've got, the, you've got bigger balls than them and they don't like it, so they're going to shout at you to kind of like, oh, I'm... Fuck off, dog. Um, just like that, in fact. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> they just think, I'll do this line of coke in the toilets and then I'll shout at her, because yeah. I think I'm funnier than her, because she's only a bird. And then when you wipe the floor with them, they really, really don't like it. Well, I don't know it's what you want me to do with this. Now, what I want you to do, let's do one like that. Hang on, hang on, that's really nice. Now look properly in the mirror. What do you see? Me? Yeah. Anything deeper than that? No. <laughs> Me you... going, uh, did I put my makeup on? I'm so bad at putting makeup on. When you get older, yeah. because you get like um, long-sighted, you need your reading glasses on to put your makeup on. Uh -huh. But you can't put your makeup on when you've got your reading glasses on. So you just end up like sort of guessing where it probably should go. <laughs> just like, but isn't there a I just hope for the best. Isn't there a magnifying side to the mirror? How is that? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, let's do a selfie. I've been told by um, Tenjue that I'm shit at taking selfies. <laughs> don't you have to take it from above. You don't want, you don't want chins in it. Come on, See, Steve, you should know this by so now. So then how do I press the button? Well, you put it on the timer. Oh, yeah. How do I Look, there's the timer. the timer. Yeah. And then you go, like, it's five seconds, and then you press that. Go on. And then you hold it up. Oh, I didn't ever done that before. Well, you've learned something today. There we go, five, four, three, two. <laughs> He stopped laughing before the one. I know, because I look, I, 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 I still want to laugh. <laughs> yeah, right. You look really nervous. I do. <laughs> That's a nice one, I like that. Is it? Yeah. Well, I look nervous, at your so. lovely eyes. Thank you very much. The other thing I was going to ask you about, the, the Comedian's Party. So Susan Murray has been uh, organising Comedian's Party for... Um, I don't know, it's probably... They've all merged into one. I'm always very drunk. They are amazing parties <laughs> yeah. because they are just for comedians, aren't they? We don't get, we don't get a work do. Um, that's Frankie, and that's, that's Frankie in the background. Yeah, yeah, and we can't we can't do December because everyone's too busy in December. <laughs> True. So we have it in January. <laughs> Shut up, dog. There's another dog. It's just comedians because uh, the place is limited, and why should your wife come? She's not been on the motorway at three o'clock in the morning after she's died on her ass, and the highways agency have closed the motorway. And you've got so, a bad handbrake. Yeah. Look at the handbrake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what's really nice about it? It's like being in Edinburgh, but everyone's not going. How's your show going? How many numbers? Like, so no one's got the stress of Edinburgh. It's a really nice vibe. To it. But like the minute you walk in, like you just—it's full of people that you've known for nearly thirty years that you you love dearly, and you you know, and it, it's fantastic, isn't, isn't it? it? Isn't it? And I was also going to ask you um, anything else coming up um, soon promoting yeah, Susan I'm, Murray. I'm doing a comic strip presents screening at my gig in Walthamstow at the Red Inn Comedy Club. Um, that's actually being held at the Trades Hall, and I've got Peter Richardson and Nigel Planer. Uh, and Robin Ince is going to be asking questions. But when is it? Because I don't know when this is going to go out. Uh, that's going to be the 24th of November. It's a Sunday. It's an all dayer, and that's uh, the year 2024. Get on the mailing list because my, my shows, they, they all sell out to the mailing list, um, and I've got Stuart Lee on tonight. But you can't come to that because it sold out in nine minutes. It was quack, quicker than Oasis. Is it? Yeah, it sold out quicker than Oasis. Miles better than Oasis. <laughs> Susan Murray, comedian and plane crash freak. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs>
Remember to like and subscribe because Susan oh, yeah. Murray's on it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I am, aren't I? Yeah. Oh, I'm so flattered. <laughs>